guys, welcome to another Clockwork Case Mods video update. I think this is number 10 in the Cypress 29 series. Um, I'm going to get to installing hardware here. I'm going to start with the motherboard. I'm going to get it uh, mounted, get my standoffs in there, and then work on the input-output panel, getting it cut for the uh, graphics cards. I'm basically going to take the graphics card, um, the metal bracket that mounts it in, a nor in the case normally, and bend the 90 degree angle flat, and then bolt it right into here because the graphics cards are going to be rotated and uh, mounted with the face out so it's like a 90 degree tilt or yeah, 90 degree tilt and um, they'll be run with uh, PCI Express uh, riser cables through the back here I also have to make a uh, little acrylic panel to cover the uh, cables and have something for the uh, graphics cards to plug into so uh, I'm going to probably add that to this video as well so first, uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, I usually use the motherboard itself as a stencil and I'll trace the circles and uh, draw out the holes and I'll probably put some in threaded inserts in there to make it a little, uh, little more rigid connection. And um, then once I have the uh, standoffs on there, <coughs> I'll start, uh, I'll probably take the motherboard back down and uh, paint the shroud and then I'll start going to uh, working on the input output. I have some little um, right triangles that I'm going to put here instead of the pieces I had before. I kind of want to make it match the uh, parts that are connecting my two cases, uh, two, ca two door panels rather. So uh, there's quite a bit of stuff left in this interior case, but it's the last part of the case before I can do final assembly. So it's getting closer. Um, I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks, maybe by the end of February, I'll have it done. Just realistically, I I've been pushing it back farther and further and doing redesigns and I just want to get it finished already and uh, start working on a new project and uh, get some other client projects as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start working on this now though. First what I did was go to all the holes on the motherboard and try to get as much of a circle as I can drawn to the motherboard tray with a pencil that I kind of whittled into a point with a knife to so it'll fit through there long enough. Mechanical pencil wasn't working. I, don't, uh, I didn't want to stick the drill right through the motherboard. Now I'm going to take the motherboard tray out, drill out all the holes in the center, and put the standoffs in. Okay, to save time, I just decided to drill them out right from here. And it hasn't been too bad. Things are a lot easier on the drill press, but this, this works as well. Just trying to get the drill through the center of each one of these holes that I made, or marks that I made. Then I'll open up the drill bit with the four millimeter and press the inserts. All the screw holes are now opened up with a uh, four millimeter uh, drill bit for the inserts that I have. These are M3 inserts for plastic. They have a uh, diamond knurl on them and it grips on. Uh, there's no flange on these ones either. So I'm able to uh, put the screw through at the back and basically just tighten the insert on and eventually it'll grip into the plastic and pull it through and then it'll be in there nice and secure. And I have a much uh, tighter, more reliable thread than if I was just to thread the plastic. And I like to put a washer on the screw and it, it usually helps uh, relieve pressure around the edge there. I don't want it to crack as I pull the insert in. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and knock out the rest of these and get the standoffs turned in. Now that they're all installed, I use these ins uh, standoffs here. These are, I believe, 8 millimeter uh, M3 standoffs. All the other hardware in my computer build is M3, so I decided to go with that on the motherboard as well. So I basically get, the, get all these started and then I use a nut driver that'll uh, tighten them all down for me. All right, and that was the last screw to tighten it down, so it came out pretty decent. Uh, one of the screws is a little, little close to, uh, it's 
kind of off, but it still went in pretty well. So I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, I want to measure out a custom box here. Now I'm going to, now it's like test fitting hardware to see, uh, how big of a enclosure I can make here for the express cables. Um, and getting GPUs mount set, set in place and tested, uh, kind of test fitting basically so I can mark out where I need to cut the holes for it. And then, um, once I have that secure, I can, uh, actually glue the input output panel to the bottom panel and have the, uh, hole cut out for it. And then, uh, I got to get bulkhead holes drilled out in this uh, panel too, but um, for now I'm going to probably take the motherboard down and paint the shroud and get it get it ready to be finished basically. And uh, yeah, that'll be the next step. All right, I'm just moving the removing the last screw from the thermal armor, and then it'll be ready to uh, get prepped for paint. <coughs> That second list. And then this will get a cop paint. And the accent pieces like this will be painted white. Okay, uh, I just, uh, I skipped primer on this paint here because I wanted all the texture to show through from the armor. So you can see all the, uh, you know, the imprints for the writing and all the, uh, uh, it's made to look like some kind of riveted metal kind of look to it. I wanted to keep that look and I didn't want to put too many layers of paint and primer and stuff on there and have any of that fill in. So I just quickly scuffed it and uh, sprayed the copper paint on there and I'll put a little bit of clear coat over top because this copper paint actually has metal frag, uh, like metallic pieces in it and those pieces actually do tarnish. But I'll get it, I'll zoom in real quick. So if you don't clear coat it, it will uh, actually tarnish like a uh, regular copper will. So I'm gonna get a little clear on this and then I'm gonna put it on the motherboard. Okay, after the shroud, uh, after the clear coat dried, I put it back on here. I left the uh, gates out of the inside of here and I put a dot of super glue just holding the slides back in place because I'm not gonna use anything under there. That's just pretty much if you wanna use the fans. And I'm gonna keep these panels on here. I painted the accent pieces white along with the heat sink. And the copper piece that was, uh, there's a piece of metal sticker on the heatsink, and I painted that copper so it all contrasts. And then I put the uh, uh, Swift Tech water block for the CPU back on. I installed the CPU, all this stuff's done. And uh, it's mounted in place. Um, after looking at the power set, or at the whole motherboard tray, I decided I actually want to move it down a little bit. So I, once I get my CNC back up and running, I'm going to. Um, have a have the whole motherboard tray cut out. I'm gonna have it cut out all the holes for my wires, and I'm gonna make panels that go over my that are sleeved into my extension cables, and then they'll bolt on and cover up all the holes, so all the wires will flow nice and smooth right into the case, and all the cables that I can do that with. The other ones I'm thinking of making uh, kind of like a uh, some kind of part that comes up and like a uh, like a hood, basically like an exhaust hood kind of that comes up out of the motherboard tray and then the wires will go straight out into them and then wrap them to where they need to go. Everything will be sleeved and connectors will be painted copper like this one right here. You can see that copper 24 pin. Um, I also did that with this uh, fan cable here. I got a copper fan cable. Uh, that's actually for the LED for the uh, CPU block. I'm gonna take this piece off, paint it copper and put a little uh, design in the paint. Not sure what I'm gonna do yet. Yeah, I think just the 29, I'm gonna leave uh, taped off something like that um, and basically that's it for now I'm going to show you real quick what the next thing I did was is uh, the Corsair Dominator memory that I have and uh, I'll get you a quick look at that and I'll show you uh, how I painted that too okay this is the most recent hardware mod I uh, did real quick while I was just like uh, kind of hanging out in the shop watching TV I decided to mask one of these off and paint it real quick uh, I'm about to show the process on the next one and uh, that'll be the end of this video here uh, with these, you know, getting the motherboard mounted, painting the shroud, and then it'll be this memory mod. All I did basically, as you can see this part here comes off and then the light, uh, acrylic light bar comes out. Uh, there's four screws that hold it in place. Uh, I was going to take the heat sinks off, but they are on there really good. Uh, the adhesive is real strong on these ones and I didn't want to risk breaking or beating up anything in the process. You know, when I took the heat sinks off my old memory, 
Um, they came off pretty easily with a lot of heat, but I did, you know, uh, scratch them up and kind of beat them up with the screwdriver when I was taking them off, but I was putting on the EK Monarch blocks onto the, my old memory for my uh, gray matter build, so I didn't really care what happened to the heat sinks uh, after I took them off. On these, I wanted to keep them, you know, I, couldn't, I didn't want anything to happen, so all I did was I taped off the edges of this and uh, took, I took off the top part and then he, uh, masked off as much of the PCB as I could. And uh, I think it came out pretty good. I think the only spot that got paint was up in the top, on the, and there's, there is, it's not going to affect anything. So I'm going to do that, and I'll show you the process of painting this, and uh, I'll wrap this video up. Okay. And basically, I want to give you a close-up, too, real quick of this. I think it came out pretty sweet. It almost looks like it came from the factory like that. So what I did is I took a strip of tape, and I got it up under the heat sink as, as, you know, as, as far as it'll go. And, uh, okay, these two, I had to peel these off. I ended up stabbing my thumb real good with the X-Acto knife. It went in about a three-eighths of an inch. And I was bleeding all over the place trying to pick these st stupid aluminum uh, stickers off. But uh, got all the stickers off, and then I, what I ended up doing, I'll show you, I, I put them on this double-sided tape, and I trace them with the X-Acto knife and make a new sticker. So I basically I tape off all this uh, here on the memory on both sides, get it as close to the heat sink as possible as I said before and it's it's like any other standard paint job you know do the, do the prep work right so you don't got to redo it especially something precise like this you do not want to have to go back and uh, do any painting rework on a memory module that's about the last thing you want to have to do so I'm gonna get the rest of this uh, masked off and uh, shoot some paint on it. Okay, as I'm masking this and I'm done now, I want to point out one of the key things is making sure you've got some kind of fine line masking tape or cut it into like an eighth inch strip and get it in this part on this memory because there's two LEDs there and those are what's responsible for lighting up this bar as it's on top here. So make sure that those are masked off because you paint on top of those LEDs and you're not going to be shining any light up into here. So this is basically done now. I'm just going to wipe off. You can see the finger. You can see the grease smudges on there. At least I can. I don't know if you can on camera, but if you catch it in the light the right way. So I'm going to scuff it up and wipe it off with this uh, uh, prep spray I got here. And this, this stuff's been awesome. Everything I wipe off with this, I've had no issues with uh, finger grease or anything. Uh, I'm going to actually mask off the other two RAM modules, and I'm going to paint them all at the same time. Okay, I got all three pieces masked off. And basically, I'm going to use the handy uh, 3M scuff pad and just go, scuff up the anodizing a little bit. Uh, nothing too crazy. I mean, this this stuff, I'm not priming it. I'm not doing anything fancy. Just a little scuff, get the grease off, and get a nice little coat of white paint on it. I mean, once these things are plugged in, they're never going to be moved. They're, they're stationary, and they're done. So, you know, it's not something you got to get too crazy with. Um, I'm really excited. I just ordered a new airbrush, so th this pr I'm kind of... You know, I'm disappointed. It makes me really want to repaint everything, but I'm not going to do that. Um, but going into my next project, a lot everything is going to be uh, airbrush painted from here on out, and I uh, I'm really anxious to use a lot of House of Color uh, uh, House of Color paints, uh, some candy paint and some pearl uh, candy paint, some pearl paint, and uh, maybe some chameleon flip flop paints on uh, some different stuff. So I'm really uh, Anticipating that to get here in a couple days. So everything's scuffed up like that. I'm just gonna hit it with a rag or with the Duplicolor prep spray that I showed you before and uh, Hit it with some paint and also I got the bars here too. All I did was scuff these up Same thing Scuff it up and then uh, wipe it off get the grease off grease is your enemy when you're painting big time. I mean, it's what basically makes paint bubble up and not stick to where you want it to stick to. So, all right, I'm gonna get some uh, paint on these pieces. Okay, everything's scuffed up and ready to paint. What I'm gonna try here is this adhesion promoter. When you don't wanna have to coat on a ton of primer, this stuff's real nice to uh, just help you get that extra, uh, that extra little bit for the paint to stick to.
I'm gonna hit the paint now. And key with the metallics is not to like, gob it on. Okay, I let the paint dry overnight. Now I'm just snapping it back together. There's a couple little spots where the silver's kind of showing through on the edge, but you'll never see it. I mean, it overall it came out great. So they're all gonna be pressed tight together and plugged in, so there's quite a bit of it that you're never gonna notice, so I'm happy with it. I'm gonna get the logos on all the rest of them. What I'm doing is I'm taking the logo, I'm sticking it to the double-sided crepe paper tape that I use on my CNC and then tracing it with the X-Acto knife, and then I got a brand new sticker back for it, and I stick it right on there. So I'm gonna get the RAM put back together and plug it into the motherboard and check it out, and that'll be the end of the video. Okay, all the pieces are now finished, and I'm gonna go ahead and plug them into their spots. Copper modded Corsair Dominator Platinums. Okay, now the uh, motherboard shroud and the memory are painted. I'm gonna wrap up this video here. Most of the hardware is done. I need to do one more um, graphics card water block. And then all the hardware will be modded and painted. And uh, basically now it's like in a uh, framework and I got to drill out for the uh, bulkheads in the floor here. I got to cut out for the radiator. I also have to make some uh, cutouts for, I actually, once the CNC's back running, I got some parts to get it uh, up and running now. Um, I'm going to cut out a new motherboard tray. It'll have all the cutouts for all my electrical. I'm going to have a cutout holes for it and then I'm going to make panels that have all the wires. It'll be like a, a cover basically, an inlet cover for all the cable harnesses and they'll be sleeved right into that panel and those will screw in and cover the holes so everything will be uh, flush mounted and, and uh, basically look like it was sleeved into the motherboard tray. Um, I also have 
the pieces, all the pieces to make the new reservoir. Um, it's going to be a dual, um, a dual tube res with a uh, block on the top and the bottom that'll be painted copper, and then uh, fins in the middle, almost looking like a copper heat sink in a way. And it'll have white coolant inside the reservoir, uh, inside uh, all the tubing. Also, I'm probably going to paint some of the uh, PET G tubing. I had an example of it back uh, a few months ago. Um, I masked off some of the PET G tubing and I painted it copper and then took off the masking tape and it'll leave a uh, blank areas where the white coolant will fill the uh, fill the tubing. So in the next update I'm going to work on the panels. It'll be getting the mother new motherboard tray finished. I have to machine off the edges here so the radiator mounts smooth. Cut off for this bottom panel here and then uh, it'll be getting work, getting to work on the uh, electrical and getting some cable harnesses. So ho I'm going to hopefully fit a good bit of that into the next video. Um, with this one, I'm going to take the two videos I have now and get a forum update going. And then that'll be the there'll be one more. That might be the last update, and then a, the next update will be a final update. And then after that, I'll have a uh, maybe a final video and uh, final photos of the project. So it's getting pretty close to the end. It's just little bits and pieces here. And then, uh, oh, I also have to make this uh, extension panel. It'll be a bunch of jumpers from all the hidden uh, ports on the motherboard and graphics card. It'll go to this panel here so I don't have to reach in the case to plug things in. So, uh, yeah, then it'll be final paint. I'll tear the whole case down and paint everything and build it up from the bottom up once I have all the uh, electrical sorted and all the water cooling sorted so I, I can just build it and get it all finished as I go. So, uh yeah, that'll wrap up this video. Um, go ahead and uh, like and subscribe if you like what you saw. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one.